Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and I have another EC3101 signals and systems problem. And so today we're moving away from analog signals and we're going to talk about the discrete time Fourier transform, which is the thing that allows us to analyze the frequency components of discrete valued signals. So things that only exist at certain points in time, uh, like sampled analog functions. So this is very good for uh, digital processing. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find uh, the discrete time Fourier transform of these two functions. And we're going to see if we can relate them uh, to uh, things that we do know via time shifting properties. Uh, the time shifting property is very similar to the time shifting property for the original Fourier transform. So first we're going to deal with this first one here. And that is that uh, we have x1 to the n equals a to the n u of n minus u of n minus 10. And so this is just a switch. The u of n is just a switch on, switch off function. And we're looking at the exponential uh, sum constant to the nth power. So if we're going to take the discrete time Fourier transform of this, we have to apply the formula. And the formula is the sum from n equals the beginning index, which is 0 in this case, to the ending index. And because we have u of n minus 10 here, the ending index is 9. So we're going 0 to 9, giving us a capital N, which is the length of our function of 10. And so we're going to add a to the n, e to the j omega n minus j omega n. And that will be, this is actually is our discrete time Fourier transform, which we write as x of e to the j omega. So this is actually a representation of what it is. If you had a computer calculate this, this, is, this would give you the discrete time Fourier transform. But we can simplify this. So we can apply our geometric series formulas and make this look a little nicer. So the first thing I'm going to do is write everything to the index. So I'm going to erase this n here and this n here and group these two together and put everything to the n there. So we can think of this thing inside the parentheses here as our common ratio for a geometric series. And we know how to create the formula for uh, the sum of a geometric series that doesn't go to infinity. Um, the general form for that is that the sum from n equals 0 to capital N minus 1 equal of a to the n, for instance, equals 1 minus a to the capital N over 1 minus a. And so we're going to apply this formula here, but instead of it being a, here it's a e to the negative j omega. So what we get is we're, we get 1 minus a e to the negative j omega, a e to the negative j omega, to the power of n, and our n here is 10. And you could distribute that if you want, but I'm just going to leave it in this form. And then we're going to divide by our ratio here, which is 1 minus a e to the negative j omega. And so that is our discrete time Fourier transform of our original function here, x1. And so um, this is, you would just plot this from negative pi to pi and you can see the Fourier transform, the frequency components of this digital function. Um, we plot from negative pi to pi and not negative infinity to infinity because digital frequencies only exist between negative pi and pi. Alright, so uh, we can see that this would look like directly if we took this to infinity, we could write this function instead as a to the n u of n minus a to the n u of n minus 10 
But we could also write this, we can take this a to the n here and make this something a little more familiar to us. We can have this be a to the n minus 10, u of n minus 10, a to the 10. And so we could just apply a time shifting property to this Fourier transform, which we might actually know already. This one is probably a standard one that you've had derived for you. Apply it here and then multiply by a to the 10, and you'll actually get the same thing. So that's another way to go about this by applying your time shifting properties. But doing, knowing the geometric series formula is always good anyway. All right, so now we're going to move on to this second, um, the second function here, which is just a switch on, switch off function. And so directly applying our formula, we get a summation from n equals 0 to 8. Of, it's a switch function, so the value is just 1. All of our x of n's are 1. Uh, times e to the negative j omega n. And so just applying our geometric series formula here, we get that x of e to the j omega is going to equal to 1 minus e to the negative j omega 9 over 1 minus e to the negative j omega. And so you can leave it in this form. It's perfectly valid. You could graph this, plug in some real values of omega. You'll get real values or imaginary values with uh, some phase shift. If you take the magnitude, you get the magnitude uh, response. If you take the phase, you can get the phase response of this. Um, but I'm going to try to relate it to something else with the time shifting principle that we were talking about. So if I take the top and bottom here and multiply by e to the negative j 0.5 omega on top and bottom. We would get e to the negative j 0.5 omega minus e to the negative j 9.5 it's a 9 omega over e to the negative j 0.5 omega minus e to the negative j 1.5 omega. And now I'm going to factor out from the top and e to the negative j 5 omega. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by that. So actually I should just factor it out um, from here. And on the bottom, I'm going to factor out an e to the negative j omega. So that's e to the negative j 1 omega. So what that's going to do is it's going to re, uh, reduce this value by 5, or it would increase it technically because it's a negative. It's going to increase this by 5. It's going to increase this by 1. It's going to increase this by 1. So if I do that, I'm going to have e to the j 4.5 omega minus e to the negative j 4.5 omega and then we're going to divide by e to the j 0.5 omega and then we're going to subtract e to the negative j 0.5 omega and so I factored out from the top here e to the negative j uh, 5 omega and on the bottom I factored out e to the negative j 1 omega, and so we can simplify this by canceling out e to the negative j omega on top and bottom to just having e to the negative j 4 omega. And so if you know your hyperbolic definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent, this is sine 4.5 omega over sine 0.5 omega. So continue home with our chain of equals we get sine of 4.5 omega divided by sine of 0.5 omega times e to the negative j 4 omega. And so this is from your book. This is a gating function that has a length 9 and is centered around 0. And what we did uh, it has length 9, so that means that the width goes from negative 4 to positive 4, including 0, so that's length 9. 
Um, and we've shifted it over four units to the right so that it goes from zero to eight instead of going from negative four to four. And so we've multiplied this by our time shift in the Fourier domain. So time shifting in the Fourier domain amounts by e to the negative j time shift to the right omega. And so that's what all we've done here is we've done a time shift on the gating uh, function. And so you can apply the direct Fourier transform and it will get you an answer that is perfectly fine. Or you can use the time shifting property and sometimes it will make your lives easier. I hope this helped guys. Have a good day.